Yeah, that Bruins Tampa series. I know the other night watching the game, you see Blair Jones, who was playing for Tampa Blair Bay. Uh, Blair, an all star or close to an all star here with us, had a great rookie season uh, here in Springfield when uh, we were affiliated with Tampa Bay. On the other side, there's a Brad Marchand, who you see a lot. Our fans saw a lot yeah. of him in Providence. So yeah, there's always, uh, and I think those are those are tidbits that we you think are, they're assumed out there, but I don't know if everyone grasped the fact that these are guys that were just in the AHL not long ago. Well, you can look at a lot of the guys, and I talked to Rob Murray the other day, and you can talk uh, look at a lot of the players that are on the, on the Boston Bruins and uh, McQuaid and, and uh, Boychuk and, and uh, Marshawn, and there's others that were playing in Providence last year, and they're now playing in the National Hockey League, and our fans have seen them play against us, as you mentioned a couple of them. And, you know, as you mentioned, Blair Jones and others that are playing for Tampa, and, and it's in the other series as well with both Vancouver and uh, and San Jose. Uh, I mean, you can go way back and look at the coach of San Jose uh, used to play here in Springfield and Todd McClellan. So, you know, there's that real hockey uh, uh, development of not only players in our league that go up to the NHL, but coaches and scouts and everything else. So our fans have to remember, you can come right down here to the Mass Mutual Center and you can watch some of the best hockey you're ever going to see. It's the second best league in the world and watch a lot of young players who are going to be playing in the National Hockey League for years to come. Damon Markowitz along with Bruce Landon. Once again, another edition of Falcons Web TV as we come to you from the birthday room here at the Mass Mutual Center, the bird day room. Bird. Get in the habit of that. As yes, the bird is the word, the bird day room. A um, little tongue twister there, but we'll get the hang of it. Uh, merchandise on sale all summer long as well as we've touched upon that already in today's agenda. Uh, don't forget our social media streams on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, always a lot going on here with the Falcons, even though as we get into a Memorial Day weekend and June, but a lot going on. And as we get into June as well, you start to get a little bit of the tease. You know, we've been done now almost too long. It seems like an eternity right. since the last time we played a game. Uh, free agency a little bit. Uh, I know Rob Riley periodically comes in our office here. Uh, just a quick little update on the hockey side. And as we get into the finals, are, is this when the free agency early stages kind of start picking up a little bit? Right now, it's a, what I've called in the planning stages. Effectively, unless you have the rights to a player, you, you can't go into f offer free agents contracts until July 1st. They don't technically become free agents until July 1st. The group six free agents, and then there's the group threes who are tendered to offer. If they're not offered a contract by a certain date, then they go into the pool as well. So when I say we're in the planning stages right now, it's sort of um, addressing where we think our holes are. And uh, we've already been through that process with Chris McFarland and, and the assistant GM of Columbus. So I've sat down with him, I've sat down with Rob Riley, our coach, uh, and sort of that we're all on the same page as where we think our holes are going to be. So when we go into free agency, we know where to fire our bullet, so to speak. And uh, uh, we've addressed the, the areas. We, and it's no secret, uh, Columbus feels that we have to get stronger up the middle here in Springfield by adding a number one, maybe a number two centerman. Uh, we'd like to land a, a number one left winger uh, with some scoring ability. We'd like to land a veteran defenseman, and we really have to address the goaltending situation. We do have Alan York under contract, who played very well for us when he came in at the end of his college career last year, uh, but we also have to sign a veteran goaltender who would be sort of a number three in the Columbus organization. We'd be our number one, uh, be the first sort of right to recall. Uh, so there's some holes to fill. Uh, we've already addressed some of the uh, sort of, uh, I won't call them bottom end, guy, bottom end guys, but sort of younger guys I think impressed us last year. And Aaron Bogosian has signed an HL contract for next year. Uh, Wade McLeod has signed an HL contract for next year. So both those young men will be at our training camp fighting for a position on their team. It'll be up to them whether they can make us make our team or not. Uh, just because they're on an HL contract does not even give them a spot with, with our team. They still have to go into training camp and earn that spot. So. There's definitely some holes to fill. Uh, we're pretty deep on defense with a lot of returning guys, uh, but certainly we need to get a, a veteran defenseman and, and fill those other spots I mentioned. So we're in the planning stages, come July 1st, then it's, it's crazy. Uh, every agent is called by all the GMs, and it's up to players to make decisions where they want to go based on, uh, sometimes it's not always money. Uh, a lot of people, fans, like to think it's all money-driven. Some cases it's not, it's uh, opportunity. Uh, some of the good, the high-end players will look at, you know, our, our operation, would they get a better chance of playing Columbus as opposed to if they sign with, uh, say, Boston Province, would they get a better opportunity to play in Boston? So a lot of it's a combination of money, opportunity, our, our facility, uh, what we have to offer as an organization, all those things factor into it. Tim and Markowitz along with Bruce Landon, another edition of Falcons Web TV as we come to you from the Bird Day Room here at the Mass Mutual Center just off the Falcons office. Uh, a lot of merchandise available this summer as you can see it behind us. That's available all summer long as part of our main office here Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Give Alicia a call. And I want to touch upon, uh, staying a little more of a hockey theme, it seems like a lot of hockey questions right. this week. Everyone's got a little bit of the, the, the cup crazy. Yeah. and. 
touch upon the Calder Cup uh, finals. Uh, I know a lot of fans have been keeping tabs uh, as far as what's going on and who's winning right now. It's down to two teams, Houston and Binghamton. Yeah. Um, just your thoughts on the finals and, and talk about two different markets as far as size goes as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm not supposed to have a favorite, uh, but I do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I went out on the limb when the playoffs started and, and thought that Binghamton was going to be a very tough team to beat. Uh, they were peaking at the right time. They had gone through a, a winning streak that got them into the playoffs on the crossover, uh, the way our format was this past year. And then with Ottawa not making the playoffs, Ottawa was able to get some players back to Binghamton that were on their uh, on their uh, HL Clear Day list. So they sort of loaded up. They got healthy at the right time, and uh, they got guys like Ryan Patolny who are just are, are lighting it up. And they had some good rookie kids, a kid like Butler, and these guys are really playing well. And their goaltending's been outstanding. So. Uh, but it's going to be a good series, Binghamton and, uh, and Houston. Binghamton should be well rested now. Uh, Houston's just coming off a seven-game series against Hamilton that they won last night in overtime. Uh, Johnny DeSalvador scored the winning goal a couple minutes ago, a local guy from, from down around the, the Connecticut or Boston area, but I know he's from the area somewhere. But it's going to be a good series. But as you mentioned, a small market in Binghamton, um, seats about 47, 4,800. I'm really happy for Tom Mitchell and his partners that own the Binghamton team. Uh, I guess if uh, if there's a silver lining for us or light at the end of the tunnel, uh, you know, we've struggled to make the playoffs the last several years. Well, Binghamton was going through the same thing. They hung in there with the Ottawa Senators. They had to make the playoffs, I think it was in six years. And they hung in there with Ottawa. And look, well, now this year they're in the finals. So I'm happy for Tom and his partners. Uh, it's nice to see a small market and an independent ownership group uh, have a chance to win a Calder Cup. And on the flip side, you got Houston that's you know owned by Minnesota, uh, a whole different approach they take down there, a bigger market, bigger facility. Uh, I think they had 6,100 last night, but their crowds had only been okay up until that point. Uh, so we're hoping from a league perspective that we get Binghamton selling out their small building and Houston starts packing them in in their building as well. But I think it's going to be a, di a great series. It looked to me like uh, we don't play Houston. I don't know. I know a lot of their players, but don't know their style too much. But uh, certainly, two of the two of the teams that deserve to be there, and uh, it should be a great series. Well, hopefully, it goes seven with a triple overtime in Game Seven, yeah. and really, really drag out the drama.